button. I see transcriptions already on. Yeah, I turned that on. Awesome. Huh? Here we are. All right. Um, hi, everybody. It's March 15th. I'm the Mark. Whoa. I'm gonna, some, hey, Ada, can you mute? audio thing just went nuts. I think it's Enoch. Um, okay. Um, hi. Hi, everyone. Ides of March today. So welcome. Glad you're here. And uh, let's get going. Share. I hope everybody's doing well, um, as well as, you know, you can be doing when the world's on fire, as it always is, seems like. But um, here's our agenda. If you would not mind to put your, um, to just mark your, your name down here under a list of attendees as a chaotic that is here today, um, we would appreciate that. But of course, you do not have to do that, as always. And we also always like to reiterate, you do not have to have your camera on. We don't care. We're super casual here. And if you would prefer to chat instead of um, instead of speaking in the meeting, that's also completely valid. And we do try to incorporate the chat in the meeting. So now that that's all out of the way, uh, let's get to it. So the first one is, um, we were just talking about this before we started recording. Um, we're in that wonderful time of year where time zones are all wacky. The US has moved forward an hour. Other places have not, other places will not. So um, just a reminder to check the, the chaos meetings. Actually, you should check all your meetings if you're dealing with anyone in the US, um, just to make sure that you know when you're supposed to be doing what. So um, the, all the single source of truth for all chaos meetings are on this page right here. And I don't know why it didn't link, but it's on this page right here. So you just go here, you go to the little calendar and it will tell you, and you can subscribe to the chaos calendar. Um, it'll, it'll come up, there we go. <laughs> um, it, you can subscribe to this calendar if you don't wanna copy everything over to your personal calendars. Um, the, the benefit of doing so is if these meetings change and they do occasionally change, um, different working groups try different cadences or try different times that work better for the core groups, you know, of the mem uh, of the um, of the group. Um, yeah, so things might change. Subscribe is good, or you can also copy it over. But if something changes, it won't transfer over to your to your personal calendar. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, does anybody have questions about that? I don't really have any answers because, yeah, I don't know. I just do what I'm told with the times. All right, let's go ahead. Um, this is also another reminder to check the metrics candidates that are new. There's eight of them, I believe, eight. Um, and you can find them here. And if you're looking for a way to ease yourself into chaos, this, is my, this might be a good, a good thing for you. Um, we have these metrics that are in uh, under review for the next release in April. And before we release them officially, we uh, give a 30 day open public review period. So in order to do that, all you would do is click on this to read the metric. This is what the metric is going to say once we release it. So if you see something in here that doesn't jive with your experience or something that sounds weird or is confusing, um, then you can go back to this page and open uh, or, or make a comment in this issue down here. So, so you can see who has already made some comments and then the working group will take those comments and review them and then incorporate changes if necessary into the metric before it's released. So, so there, uh, sorry to interrupt, but there is a link, there is a link to this issue in the metrics page itself as well at the oh, top yes, of the page. Is. Yes, that is a, a very excellent point. So you can, uh, if you're here and you see something, yes, you can just go straight to the issue. Good point, Kevin. Spam's calling me, you guys. Should I pause the meeting and answer? We can all have a fun turn at talking to spam people. Okay, any questions about that? There, like I said, there's eight of them and they all are on this page here. We'll have this under view tag. So if you see something that looks interesting to you, how about it? 
questions, comments, anything? You have you do have a couple more weeks that will end at the end of March um, to get ready for the April release. So you have two more weeks left. All right, well, let's go ahead. We are plowing through. I love this. Um, so currently, just an update, Google Summer of Code students are completing their micro tasks um, that were listed in order to um, see if it's a project that they want to be part of for the summer. Um, just wanted to throw this out there. So you probably, as community members, will see a lot of new faces, as we have been seeing. Um, if you see a question someone's asking, um, let's all kind of chip in and, and make sure that we're, um, you know, just, just acting as a community to help if we can, reaching out, making sure people can find what they need and can uh, have the information they need to complete those micro tasks if they're struggling with anything. So I just want to throw that out there. Um, just that we don't have to wait for someone else to answer. If we know the answer, we can just jump in. It's, it's totally fine to do that. Um, and if you would like to kind of just help in an informal way, there is a Google, uh, there is a Slack channel called uh, GSOC. Well, here, I'll just copy it. Hang on. Will that work? Maybe? No, it won't. Okay. Uh, it is... GSOC and also um, they might be in the newcomer channel or maybe even general. So the group effort here. So thank you. Appreciate everybody jumping in and helping out, making sure that everybody, the new people can find what they need and that they're not confused and languishing out there. Um, there were some questions on um, how one becomes a, a formal mentor. So I was going to throw that at you, Sean. Uh, if you can just outline for us um, the, uh, quickly the mentorship steps that if somebody wants to be a mentor, what would they do? How would we do that? If For Google Summer of Code? Yes. For Google Summer of Code, it's pretty simple. I just need your email address and the project that you wish to be a mentor for. And I add you to the Google Summer of Code mentor list in our portal and add you to the list of mentors under the particular project or projects that you are interested in. Are there any qualifications? Well, I would expect that you have some knowledge of the thing that you're mentoring people on, but short of that, no. Uh, Sean? Yeah. I think in support of Kevin's question, you know, we are mentoring students and it's not something we really just want, uh, so, uh, let's say, a trial and ex somebody doing an experiment with a well-knowledgeable student. So there should be some kind of, even if we don't take it too seriously, we should list down some list of uh, attributes or qualifications that people should have like expectations i think the expectations are easy to to state i think the qualifications are more difficult to state because it's going to vary by project yeah. and I, I you know i expect anyone that's on this call that would decide that they want to mentor for a project has sufficient knowledge to provide guidance to the google summer of code student I think if I would get a request to mentor from someone whom we didn't know or hadn't been active, I might probe a little more deeply, but I've never gotten a request to be a mentor from anyone like that. So it's a, I think it's a possible case, but it's a case that has not been realized. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think it does. Because sometimes this thing is not just for, I mean, it helps for clarification because sometimes people might have a misconception, communication uh, bottleneck and things like that. So this kind of expectations really helps to, to bridge, especially the students that might be having uh, creeping with that context. So might have, might be having what with the context? You know, like some students are up on top of the game some are just like uh, they need more help more hands to to get them up so this kind of awareness of different communication skills skills in you know different kind of uh, interpersonality skills and things like that will really help 
just to make sure people know what they are going in for. Yeah, yeah. Um, th those those are stated in the Google Summer of Code. Um, okay, so I think that we should so put could... the list. We should put the link to that uh, place so that it's just for us to just make sure, you know, we are uh, we are we are on the same page. Okay. Um, where would you suggest I put that? I think like where we talk about mentor, interested mentor, you just, if we're becoming a, if you are interested to becoming a mentor or something like that, you just put the link to of the Google, uh, some of good link of mentors. Um, so that's, but where would I, but like, I wouldn't put that link in the Google Summer of Code documentations because those are targeted towards potential Google Summer of Code developers. Okay. So I'm, I'm like, maybe that would go in the handbook. Or maybe, maybe at the top of the ideas page. Sure. Yeah, I could, I could put uh, Google Summer of Code qualifications at the top of mentor qualifications at the top of the GSOC page. That's fine. We also have a, um, a Slack channel, right, Sean, for mentors? We do. We, we probably should make that private at this point since the students okay. are now in there. Okay. And that's something that someone suggested when I initially created it, but I thought it was a little premature then. I think it's probably appropriate now and I can certainly easily go in there and do that. Okay. Like right now. Okay. Well, I think so I you'll can. add I them to, to, to the list of mentors and to the slide. Yeah. At this point, the only person who's asked to be a mentor is Armstrong. Uh, we've had a couple. Kevin and I have had a couple for the knowledge base. So. Okay. okay. Yeah. Just. I yeah. I'll make this private. Okay. And uh, as soon as I can figure out how to do that. I'm sure it's not that hard. Awesome. One would think it's not that hard. And then um, I think Kevin asked this about the informal participant. Is there any space for someone who doesn't want to maybe commit or doesn't have the right qualifications to commit full time to being a mentor, but maybe just wants to help in a supportive role? Is that is there is there a place for that? Uh, additionally, uh, if you are a formal mentor for the project, you have you're part of the voting process for who gets selected, and then you also have to provide feedback to Google. So perhaps there's another level of mentor that that doesn't that isn't part of that uh, that formal process where they're they're just there to participate and help out. Is that a is that a thing? I mean, that's always happened informally. There have been people who are not named mentors who do um, help out informally, but we've never had a process for that. It looks like I can't turn an existing public channel into a private channel, so I'll create a new channel. Okay, and we said nothing, uh, n n no process here. Um, and then I see the next question is how many mentors should a project have? Is there a good guideline for that, Sean, in your, in your experience? Good. Well, Google's gone back and forth. I think one fully committed mentor is really essential. In the last two summers, Google's asked us to have two or three mentors assigned to a project. I, I, I think as long as the sort of main coordination mentor it knows who they are, that will be the most important and the other mentors can coordinate with them so that we don't provide the students with conflicting advice, for example. But I don't think there's a limit. Google has preferred us the last couple summers to have at least two or three mostly because of pandemic related issues but I, I don't see those being as uh, significant or foregrounded this year
Does anyone else have questions about the mentorship or Google Summer of Code for Sean or for anybody who's been through the project before or program before? Hi there. I'm not able to anyone. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Oh, okay, so yeah, I'm so, I'm so interested in mentoring this year. So I found this project, uh, GSOC organization, the page. Uh, I thought like I can decide myself and, you know, uh, can have some um, uh, exploration and also that have, I can have some uh, exploration idea. Uh, with DigiSoap idea, which I have, think inclined with my own idea and explore something with the existing mentors and uh, yeah, help volunteer this uh, this project, which I really am interested in. So yeah, that only that sort of thing actually I was triggering, triggered out and uh, explore much as much as possible. So as far as now, I don't have any question for that. Well, welcome. Welcome, glad to, glad to have you here. So yep, thanks nice. for that. Thanks so much. Nice to meet you. Thanks so much, yeah. yeah. Sure. All right, well, I guess we're good to go forward. Um, do you have any other questions anybody can ask in um, the general channel? We'll point you to the right direction. It's good enough, I think. Okay, let's move on. Um, I know there's been discussions about moving from the mailing list to a discussion forum. Um, I just kind of wanted to bring this back to the group. I know some of those people in that group are here. Um, I just wasn't sure what are our next steps? Do we have like a plan of action or like, what are we, what, what's, what are we doing? For which one? um migrating from a mailing list to the forum i know it we're, we're not gonna you know implement that overnight but i just wondered if there's something we sh like is it what what i feel like it's kind of stalled a little in in the discussion yeah. phase, and i just wasn't sure of like what what's going to be next like how do we move forward with it i think the biggest thing was to get brian warner to give us the subdomain and i'll email him about that right now No, there, there's a, yeah, there, there's considerable discussion on the Slack channel. Uh, at one point, there was a question of whether or not we wanted to just handle the discussion in the Slack channel, or if we wanted to have a Zoom meeting to, uh, to go over it. And I, I don't think we ever decided on either way. <laughs> so uh, is, are we at the point where we need to have a Zoom meeting to kind of wrap this up? My vote would be yes, but yeah, probably a brief Zoom meeting would be good. I see Dawn nodding her head. She's in that as well. Okay. Okay, so let's, I'll do that. I'm going to do a doodle. And we'll, we'll go forward. I just don't want that to kind of languish and then the website be ready and we're, not, you know, the forum isn't ready to go. And so, yeah, I just want to. Yeah. Keep that yeah. Getting the forum ready to go should be lightweight. Um, Once we land on what. Yeah. Matt, ready. Matt was going to do it, but then I volunteered to do it on a call late last week. And so I just need to actually talk to Brian Warner. Okay. Now. So I'll do that while we're sitting here. Okay. No worries. We, we haven't even landed on what categories we want to start with yet. So no worries. Yeah, I know there was some discussion. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks, everybody. Um, all right. So the next item on the agenda was it's just an FYI uh, that All Things Open, which is a fantastic open source conference. If you've never attended or been a part of that, it's really wonderful. The um, CFP is open now i think it just opened today maybe at least i just found out about it today so here you go uh october 30th november 2nd it's in the u.s in raleigh north carolina which is a really fun city if you've not been there before it's really awesome um 
we uh i don't think chaos will do anything official like we won't have any kind of meet meetup or anything like that we're going to go more towards ossEU for chaos con but this is a really great conference and um someone's saying it overlaps with KubeCon or KubeCon, however you choose to pronounce that, uh, in Detroit. So if you have a lot allegiance to that, maybe that will be that will get your attention more than all things open. And I hate when things overlap, but I guess it's unavoidable at times. There's only so many so many days in the year, so um, only part of it overlaps. And there are direct flights from Raleigh to Detroit, so I'm probably going to overachieve and try to do both because that's Ooh. what I. That's what you do, it's what you're about. Because I think you can go to the first day or two of all things open and then not miss much at keep going, I think. Is it, uh, you, yeah, you say it's ambitious, it. but ask me whether it was a smart idea after. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Done. <laughs> okay, so uh, we always say this too, but if you're a first time speaker or a relatively inexperienced speaker and you want some feedback on your abstract before you submit something, um, there's a lot of people here who have done a lot of public speaking, would be more than happy to have a quick look at your abstract before you submit. Um, I personally also uh, volunteer usually to listen to talks virtually over Zoom. If you want someone to, to be your, your sounding board, your, your guinea pig, your first run, I'm more than happy to do that as well. So I usually use my dog for that. And it's like, she's very attentive, but she doesn't really provide the best feedback on ways I can improve. So I will be, I will be your dog. I will be your puppy and I will listen to you, give you feedback. So yeah. Any questions about any of that stuff? Okay. So this week, uh, moving on, we get an update on the Evolution Working Group from Sean. So Sean, what do you got for us? What's well, the Evolution, the Evolution Working Group did not have anybody come last week. So we are in the position of wanting to encourage people to participate in that working group. I do think we have probably, we're starting to basically A, look at some of the old metrics as we get memos from Matt and Elizabeth, but I think more importantly and interestingly, we'll begin the development of metrics models related to evolution and other kinds of activity metrics, which I think really are used a great deal in practice. And we could, I think the those metrics could benefit from some greater discussion. We did release, I think, two metrics and some updates in the most recent release that's currently under review. And now we're we're sort of as really one of the longest running um working groups looking to actively pursue metrics models that's my update <clears throat> remind us sean when does this group meet for those who would we like meet every other tuesday so not today but next tuesday at 10 o'clock which is 10, 10 central which is the hour before this call And what's the what's the date would be the date would be what uh, 22nd 22nd would be the next next meeting oops all right yeah so you can go to that meeting and then you get a 10 minute break and then you can come here so it's, it's very easy just block off the whole morning for chaos we're here for you um, I was going to ask Matt G. I don't think Matt's here today. Um, if he would be, I'm oh, sorry, sorry, I'm jumping the gun. Anybody want to ask any questions to Sean or Vinod or Kevin, who are usually in the evolution group? If you're interested in participating, I should also say um, these are some of the, let me just show you what kind of a metrics. This group works on so like code development activity so change request commits was one of their new one uh, efficiency uh, and quality so change request reviews resolution and then community growth so conversion rate was another one of the metrics 
at uh, what rates new contributors become sustained contributors, things like that. So it's really interesting stuff. It's a good, it's a good working group. I like that working group a lot. Do you want to see, um, just for, for fun, since we have a, a couple of minutes, let's just look at what are some of the ideas that are in the spreadsheet. So here are some that are considering, um, some that are in progress. And as Sean said, they'll be looking more of like what metrics models are like what metrics can be developed here that will feed into some of the metrics models group. And the metrics models group meets this, e well, for me, it's this evening at 6 yes. p.m. US Central. So that's also another group that you all can join as well. So, okay. And if you're looking for that spreadsheet, it's at the top of, well, not this one, but of any of the working group docs that spreadsheet links. So, yeah. All right, let's keep it moving then. Um, so Matt is not here. Is there anybody else from the metrics models group that would be willing to give a quick update next week on what's going on in that group? Speakers, anyone? The, the meeting is tonight. We could ask for we could ask for volunteers in the okay. meeting tonight if you'd like. Great idea. Or later today, depending on which time zone you're in. Or tomorrow. Or tomorrow. <laughs> I think it's morning time for our Asia Pacific folks. So yeah. Later. We'll just say later. There we go. All right, and and that is really the end of the agenda. So um, I don't know what else do we have that's on your minds. This is the usually the time where the good conversations really get sparked here because we got twenty minutes left, which you can either have back or we can keep going. Are we talking all about chaos con? Do we have deadlines for the CFP yet? Is there anything people need to know other than no. what we said already, which is it's likely going to be in Dublin. I think Matt was searching for to confirm the location or the that we have a room. And I think what that will determine whether it's a before or after, I think. Okay. I thought he I had confirmed. I thought he had oh, confirmed. Maybe, him, and maybe he had be wrong. Yeah. I, I don't recall that we confirmed if it was a pre conference or post conference. We'll ask Matt next week. Um, but yeah. Don, to your point, maybe it's time to reconvene the Chaos Con Planning Committee. Um, is that, do you think that's reasonable? I think so. It's always good to get the CFP out earlier rather than later, especially for people who might need a visa to travel to Ireland. Yeah, I agree. Um, um, so let's. That's a locked Slack channel, by the way. So if anyone is interested in being on that committee, uh, they need to get invited. Which committee? The ChaosCon? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, ass I'm assuming I'm in it, but if not, let me know. There are 13 people in it currently, and you are one of them. There we go. So for anybody that um, would like to help out with planning the next ChaosCon, um, let let me know or yeah just let me know on slack um, and I will add you to that and then just for anybody who's not um, or who might be new to chaos so usually when like at this time of year the chaos con committee might meet like I don't know maybe once once a month or, or so every other week or something like that and what we do is we try to piggyback it with this meeting so we would end this meeting a little bit early and give give time for the chaos con com committee to plan at the end of this meeting so um, if you're worried about you know time constraints and, and fitting another meeting in we try to kind of work with that so yeah so just let us know i think there will um be uh, again a virtual component if i had to guess i would say that would be our goal is to have another virtual component of this so i'm sure we can use um, some if you have experience with that we can probably use your help <laughs> in in uh, making that happen and um, that always seems to be a little tricky um, for for conferences to to do that so um, and anybody can join the chaos con 
channel in Slack and get regular updates. The, the ChaosCon committee channel is really only used for, for things like, um, you know, selection of talks and budget stuff, sponsors. It's used for stuff that, that we need to be careful about how, wi how widely it's distributed. So if yeah. you just want to understand and, and keep up with what's going on in ChaosCon, most of that will be in the, the open channel. It's only if you want to get involved in like the nitty gritty details and logistics um, that you should ask us about joining the ChaosCon committee. Does anyone know off the top of their head? Well, wait, I can, I bet it's back here. Uh, when the K, uh, when OSSEU is September 13th in Dublin, Ireland. So some, some point either before or after that conference is when ChaosCon will be. Um, okay. Other questions about ChaosCon? We also have, a, uh, just for the planning people, we also have that thread of feedback from last ChaosCon that we should remember to look at. <laughs> Putting that out there so I'm not the only one that remembers that because I will forget immediately after this call is over. So. Elizabeth, the range of topics that we're expecting this year, uh, did you release that already? Mm -mm. No, okay. we haven't released anything. We haven't discussed anything at all. Okay. Uh, so we need to decide on CFP deadlines and topics. Thank you, Armstrong. Yeah. And usually, oh, also just as an FYI for people who are new, um, it's usually a half day. Well, it has in the past been a whole day, but last time we did a half day and I think we liked that. So I'm, I'm guessing we will do that again. I think it's, it's yeah. cheaper for us, right? If we do the half day, the yeah. Linux Foundation gives us the space. Yeah. Can, candidly, I prefer the full day, but I'm, well, I don't know. And I don't know how much the half day is, but I mean, perhaps there are others that prefer the half day. I like the half day with a like group activity that occurs afterwards. So I thought I thought that was nice, uh, especially if we're doing a virtual because a, vir a full day virtual conference is uh, difficult. Of course, yeah. Yeah, it's a little, especially if it comes after OSSEU and someone's been virtual that whole time, and then it's like they're just done. So yeah, I totally get that. All right, and also let me, since we're talking about this, let me just go to, nope, chaos. Uh, let's go to this so people know where this thread is. If you have, uh, if you have feedback, if you were at ChaosCon last year and you have feedback that you remember that you didn't give us, um, let me drop this in the link here in the minutes. Um, we can still take that feedback. Or if you have been to a conference and you've seen something that you really liked a lot and you want to pass that along to us, we would love to have that. Or something you really hated a lot, <laughs> we can also, that's also valid feedback. So um, here's the place where we're just collecting all of it and then we'll sort through it all and see. So yeah. Just want to open that up. All right, anything else with chaos con? No, okay. What else do we have? Anything? What's going on? What's on your minds? Questions that you have? Sophia, you're talking, but we can't hear you. But you're not muted. We're, we're anxiously awaiting. The anticipation is killing me. I'm excited.
No. Yeah, there, there you go. Yes. Now okay. You... Yeah. I don't know. Sometimes when I take off my headphones, like Zoom loses my audio stream. <laughs> um, I am right into a challenge that I was curious if anyone else who's been looking at GitHub blogs, as we all do, um, where I'm having an increasing difficulty differentiating automated activity versus actually human triggered activity. And I was wondering if this is maybe larger than a two minute conversation, but I was just kind of curious if others had approached this with any particular systematic fix or investigation to help provide more clarity on what is driving the individual logs. Okay, this is a hard problem. So <laughs> I don't know if anyone else is coming across it because I, I feel like, like I've been looking a lot in, at, yeah, sorry. I was saying like in my analysis that I have used so far for the GitHub is like, I try to identify a bot, especially in the project that I'm looking at uh, by manually looking at the list. And then I filter those out of uh, interaction like for my analysis. That's the one way, one approach that I have seen. I'm not sure is there any automated system because bot has the same identity like a human on a GitHub. Yeah. That's where yeah, it's so challenging. We, we do filter out bots. So we're only looking at known people. Um, but increasingly I'm, I'm running into issues where I, I always try to like filter out outliers or look for outliers to see if there's anything else going on and have encountered more cases of people that are running scripts from personal accounts. Um, so it's being logged as a person. Um, and unless you enforce a specific type of label or comment in the, in the sort of the open text fields that can be captured in the payload of the event log, there isn't really any trace of what is happening unless you reach out to the individual person, which is not scalable. At least I, this is sort of the some of the problems that I have encountered, but I didn't know if if others were were fighting with that as well. Not exactly, but from a past experience, one thing I observed: I was doing IP tracing for the contributors, and there was an IP zero zero for a lot of contributors, and zero zero normally goes for a bot because you don't have exact like uh, zero, if you look at the zero longitude and latitude on a Google map, it is somewhere in the Pacific in middle. So from that I identify it is a bot rather than a human. This is how mm -hmm. like some of the ways I have tracked out the bots. That's interesting, thanks. I know we also had a metric around bot activity, but I don't know if um, I don't know if we talked about when humans are running their own personal scripts. But that might be a let's see what that's what this metric is. I know we were working on it. I don't know if we released it or not. I don't remember. I, I remember seeing it in the list, so I think it might be under release. Yeah, I think that's common. Is it common? Let's look up here. Oh, that's the, yeah, sorry. Bot activity. Bot activity yeah. Yeah, I think we. Here, I'll drop this in here for you. Yeah, we didn't really go into the ways that you can differentiate though. If we, we, we talked about it when, when we were defining this metric, uh, but ultimately we went kind of as general as we could because the conversation gets complex very, very quickly. 
Yeah. Yeah. And it's something that varies so much by project. I mean, I, in a lot of my uh, metrics, I, I manually filter out a lot of the bots because they don't necessarily, I mean, they're called weird things and they're generated by, you know, something in our CI CD pipelines and I don't know, maybe people are running scripts too. It's just when I, when I find one that's a bot uh, or looks like a bot, I have to go and check and make sure it's a bot. I've also got a couple of people with really weird usernames that look like bots that aren't bots. <laughs> um, so those, those are fun too, but it's a hard yeah. problem. Yeah, I, yeah, it's, I it's with easier to do. Like I agree, like within a project where I can just go ping someone and I know the people, I can better understand what's happening for not those things, I I have been leading a bit on Lucas's bot list um, in the DevStep project, which is a pretty good, like, lengthy list that you can find in that repository. But even within that, you can kind of see how GitHub Actions are showing up, and those are kind of coming in as sort of standardish label type. So I feel like we're getting better at keeping shared lists publicly, but that doesn't fix the people running automated things um, and whether or not, I guess more just from like a metrics perspective, I'm, I'm struggling with how to evaluate that as a metric if we're looking at activity logs and metrics that are ideally human driven. It was initiated by a human, but the scale of activity is now being executed by a machine. So it's kind of to me, devalue some of those metrics if you aren't able to actively filter them out or actively label them as a different kind of log. Yeah, time, yeah time to be good to edit this to include a link to the the resource you were just talking about. I don't see it in there. Yeah, it's not. I was going to ask too if you could drop that in. Yeah, uh, let me see if I can. Yeah, find and that I don't have that link. I'd love that link. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I was just going to add that time time to first response is one of those metrics that becomes almost meaningless if you uh, if you don't remove bot activity from the uh, from the equation, right? Yeah, I mean, I know if you if you work with Kubernetes, they have some auto close policies too. Um, that, depending on what you're tracking, will invalidate some metrics. <laughs> Let's see if I can find this before we sign off. Yeah, I remember talking about this metric and this this right here, bots that require human interaction. That was a big conversation because like in our DEI badging bot, um, there are pieces that, you know, we we as a human, I would initiate it, then, then the bot that does the work. So like, does it count? I mean, because I actually did have to interact. I had to make it do its thing, but then it does its thing. So that also kind of, does that count as an activity? You know, like it's, it's really hard to define. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Elizabeth, I think that is an interesting uh, question. And given that a lot of CI CD pipelines are automated these days, and this also counts on sustainability, which is health related. I'll give a simple example. Suppose you push a commit, and that commit has uh, tons of, or let's say, some. Uh, code smells, it will spin these automated machines. They will generate a lot of waste resources to fill. And in most cases, I was just thinking that we should also think about this kind of uh, carbon prints. Because we are talking about energy uh, in terms of health these days. If you have to run, let's say your CI CD multiple times to get a commit push, you are wasting a lot of resources and that is health related because we are talking now of in, uh, climate change and all these things those things are spinning up processes so a bad commit has direct implication of those kind of activities now might be we, we will say oh i'm not in uh, responsible for how the the pipeline uh, the automation or the efficiency or things like that but then the commit activity spin those type of things and it's it has been studied and it's something that it's also interest is very much relates with what we are doing at the chaos kind of community so yeah, we are responsible. yeah go ahead please i was just gonna say it's a really good point i know we've had some discussions i think so open uk which i'm a part of 
also has a big sustainability initiative. And I think that Amanda has been talking to Sean and Matt and a few other people about maybe, maybe we need some better sustainability metrics. So not sustainability of the code base, but more on environmental sustainability, because it is, it is a big issue. I mean, we, we just looked at this for the Knative project because as a part of transferring it from Google to the CNCF, when it was under Google, like the, the Google resources were sort of free. And so we weren't looking at it from a sustainability standpoint, but we were looking at it from how do we pay for all of these cloud resources that we use and which ones do we actually need or can we be more, can we be more efficient? And I think those discussions are still sort of sort of ongoing, but you know, especially when nobody's really paying for that cloud infrastructure, sometimes we use it as projects in really wasteful ways that are not good for the environment. Um, without really thinking about it from that standpoint, right? Because nobody, I don't know, you, it, we don't always think about it. So I think Armstrong yeah. has a really, really good point. I know we're basically at time. Um, is this, I, I know Don, everything is seemingly falling to the common working group, but is this, I know that bots were discussed in common. If we did want to bring that back up for sort of further on discussions, would that be an appropriate place if we did want to, talk about sustainability factor with that, go to another group? That's a good question. We could, uh, we could probably talk about it in common and, and see what we see what we think. Um, but if it becomes, if it becomes more than like, we could create a new focus area if it's just a few metrics. Um, if it becomes something bigger, maybe we need, maybe we need a sustainability working group like we have with, uh, with DEI and evolution and risk. Yeah, I mean, we I might, don't know. I don't know what the scope would be. Yeah, we might pivot evolution into sustainability just because it might fit there. Yeah. Do I, you, would you rather kick off those discussions in the evolution working group than common? I, I don't have a strong preference. Okay. I think I evolution would really I fit know. because I think evolution would really fit with sustainability because it deals with, you, you know, the. the it, it has a lot of components that evolution have been working with and, you know, keeping it in that same light. It will still cross, have some cross-platform uh, components because um, we, we, we may have different face sites in which we look at it. But I think evolution will really be a, a better place also to, to discuss this kind of uh, thing. So ev evolution is about the the lifestyle or the, the life cycle and the activity in the project. So I think sustainability absolutely fits uh, in evolution. So plus one to that. Works for me. And now we are actually a little over time. So I just want to be mindful of that. Um, do we want to put this on the agenda for common or evolution? What did we decide? Evolution. Evolution. Okay. Add to the next evolution. I got that. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah, I love these end of meeting conversations. They're so interesting. Thank you, Sophia, for bringing that whole thing up because it led into really cool conversations. Appreciate it. Um, all right, everybody, you are uh, done with us. So I hope you have a, a, an enjoyable rest of your day. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you same time, same place next week. Take care, everyone. All right, Bye, take everybody. care. Bye, everybody.